Ill Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir. We checking in with our guest for the day, Mogul. How you feeling today, bro? What's going on, good guys? How y'all? All good, man. Chilling out. Another typical Sunday in the building, you know? For sure. Appreciate y'all having me on, man. For sure. Now, Mogul, let's start from the beginning. The if beginning? Me. Yeah. Let's. Right. When did you, because you, you were a rapper, you feel yeah. me? What age did you say, I'm, oh, I want to do music? I had um I started doing music in sixth grade. Um my partner, um, my one of my good friends, uh, named Spade, he um he actually put a pen in my hand and told me to rap. He was rapping. I wasn't even rapping. And uh he was like, Yeah, you know, try this and then we was doing the whole it's gonna make me feel old, but we was doing the whole like pressing up CDs in school with the with the tower computer. Yeah. And like pressing up mixtapes in school. Um writing on our covers we ain't even had a print thing yet to write on the covers we were just doing it with sharpies you know what i'm saying i was a part of a rap group from about sixth grade to about sophomore year it was called young assassin slaughter gang uh, with some cool like they was really good artists uh and then high school was big because met slutter there he was he was free he was battle rapping um but i was still like making real songs at the time um then the groups broke up and all of that and then i ended up doing my own thing that's how i ended up running across people like torrence lamont and other people like that just in high school uh i got a deal in 2009 with uh sony um e1 e1 sony jones entertainment group my biggest money i ever got in one time this was when um but this was like this was like thirteen, fourteen, two when everybody else got signed. Yeah. So like when I, I was like in that class with like YP, BJ the Chicago kid. It was like right after Sosa and them, right. you know, right after Shamika. It was like with Sasha and them. Um caught that lick. It was just a lick. That ran about a year. Uh got dropped from the label just because they had Cali Swag District. They had a bunch of people at the time that was like way bigger than me. Yeah, and um, which was cool because I ain't own nothing. And then I fully went independent like fifteen, like twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen. What was that experience like being signed? Like what you take from that? It was fast because back then they had like they had they already had. It was like a plug and play system. Now that I look back on it, because I ain't know nothing back mm-hmm. then. I ain't know no business then. I was twenty, nineteen, twenty. For sure. I ain't know nothing, but now looking back at it, it was a plug and play system. So like, you would um, you would get the deal, and then typically you would go on these these tours, these promo tours. So like, I was out there with like, Cali Swag District, Fabulous, um, that was them teach me how to Dougie kids. So yeah, it was about it was around that time. Plies, he was big at the time. Um, we was doing like all this, we was doing this BT college tour circuit, and it was like a bunch of uh, HBCUs, and it was a bunch of small colleges in the midst of that too. So it was like it was fast. So like you get in, you go do the shows, and then, you know, at the time like we ain't even like camera phones was real new. So you ain't even really documented the way you can now. Mm-hmm. Like you could do everything on your phone now. Yeah, back so. then, the iPhone didn't even have a front camera. It only had Facts. a back camera. So like there was no selfie. All right. know, I hate this sounds so old, <laughs> oh, man, <hey. laughs> but it was no selfie. But um, but yeah, that's how that went. Um, around that year, was well, you rapping under a mogul back then? No, nah, I was shy at the time. My name was Shy C H I. I went through a couple name changes. I was shy, then I was young mogul, shy, then I was mogul. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So mogul was like the the final step in like what you doing now, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that came from just people around me, like Quarters was calling me mogul, like because I remember my my homie at the time, Two Spade, um, still my homie, but like um, he um, he called me young mogul shy, and the way he called me that day, it was like, hey, you know, Chance the rapper. You should be young mogul shy, and we did that for like an album and a half, and then it just became <laughs> longest shit. And I was like, yeah, shit, mogul, That's and then cool. I was also like, because I always looked at music like, um, even being an artist, I always looked at it like the bag boy at like Walmart or something. Mm-hmm. Like it was the entry for me. It was never like I'm a rap forever, ever, ever, ever. Like I ain't gonna be a nigga rapping 15 years. You know what I'm saying? So mogul was always like the thing. I was like, alright, well, cool. This kind of sticking because then I did have a, like a long, extensive business part of music. With other people too. Uh, with you saying that you ain't gonna rap for fifteen years, which is something I hear a yeah. lot of people saying, and like, unless you're successful at it, like, for, sh- cool. for sure that. And it's like, do you feel like uh, music, like entering music as like an artist and coming out as something like an executive or uh, uh, running the label? Do you feel mm-hmm. like that's something like a path that's underrated? Because you be having music people that be like, all right, I'm in this to. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
to direct the soundtrack one day or something like that. Right. So do you um, feel like that's an underrated entry level? I think it's I think I think artists I, I think everybody was an artist before. For sure. Everybody. I don't think people make the conscious transition to doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Like how many other people y'all know did it successfully? I don't and I mean like didn't fall off, didn't go bad, didn't get forced into it, like mm-hmm. me, Mickey, who right. else? Like as an artist, like somebody that y'all knew of back then mm-hmm. and like went through this whole rebrand and now they like contributing to other artists' success. For I don't sure. really know a lot of people. Uh, like I can't name Mickey. I can't name Mickey, either, Mickey for know? sure. Mickey was the one Mickey hosted. Um he was an artist, he was with Cash Money back in the day. Um but I was close enough to be around him to know his transition, you know. But I don't think it's too many other ones for like sure. that really do it, like for real. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that, I don't that think makes too a lot of sense, you know. So it ain't even really. With that being said, it ain't really underrated. It's just a role less travel sometimes, you know. Yeah, it's like yeah, and it, everybody wants the attention too, mm-hmm. you know. So who, who really gonna be humble enough to be like, I, right, I have my moment, and I want to not be front and center. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But for me, it was always a problem. Like anybody who do their homework on me, I had YouTube. I hated music videos. Bro, like I hated them. Even when it was like the thing to do, I hated music videos. I used to have to be so lit, like drinking, just because I couldn't ima- Like it was too theatrical to me. Yeah. Like I'm such a genuine person. I hate the word real, but like genuine, like that I would hate to show up knowing the camera is on. You want me to theatrically rap in front of this camera and make you feel like I'm somebody for three minutes. And it's like, but I know who I've been all week. I've been dude all week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like that was always a struggle for me. And I, I always know. felt like that was, um, that was a weakness for me in music and also the internet. Those are the two things that I felt like when I saw this industry shifting that I was like, I can't compete in these areas. I'm not internet, I'm not finna be doing a music, a hundred music videos. I'm not finna be out here creating a viral moment. So when I was learning at that, I was like, all right, maybe it's just good timing, you know, sure. especially to like make a transition. Mm-hmm. Rapping in high school, did you did you see yourself as a rapper or did you have that vision that you wanted to be more than a rapper because like you said you didn't want to rap for 15 years no nah, when i was in school i was lit i mean i had i was cool as an artist you know what i'm saying and that was probably that and the, the deal part was the funnest parts you know what i'm saying but yeah i didn't i didn't think executive i knew i was gonna have a label and like put my homies on because that's really where it came from it really came from getting that deal and being like and that was the advance was small twenty thousand. you know what i'm saying like i would say all the time like Boy, did we know we was like the little PPP stuff that's going on. Like we was getting them in 14, you know what I'm saying, to sign to people, you know, and some people left not owing nothing, you know, so it was like a a forgiveness in a sense, you know, but at the same time it was like I didn't know, I didn't know it in 2021 I'd be doing this, like on the label side on like, or on the business side and and I guess I touch so much now, you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I didn't, I didn't see this part. Looking back on like, cause, cause, Coming from a rapper to where you are, like that's a that's a long strat, you know what I'm saying? Like you say, a lot of people yeah. don't make that that shift or that transition as seamlessly as it seems you have, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So what were some of the bumps in the road that you faced along that path? Um So transparently, the only reason why I even end up being where I'm at right now is because no one gave me anything. Like nobody. Like, okay, I got dropped from the record deal, or whatever, but like no one wanted to like sign me after that. And it wasn't, especially on the independent front, I can name you a ton of people I liked coming up that I was like, I'll get down with you. Mm-hmm. And I would have been an asset to a lot of people's scenarios back then, but it just didn't make sense at the time for, I think for them. Um, and it kind of, it kind of goes to like, what can you offer me in that sense? Like going back to that topic of like, okay, we're going to get around each other and we're going to realize it really ain't that. So, um, no, nah, I can't, I can't imagine it, you know, any another way that it would have went this 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 road has been uh unique even the management company right like nobody will manage me Mm -hmm. i had to learn i had to learn everything like i if i had more people to lean on i probably wouldn't be who i am Mm -hmm. because i had to really go do the research like learn what contracts are agreements split sheets all of these things that was all coming from a place of me not trusting people because people did steal Mm -hmm. and then just also like okay you don't want to like you don't want to manage me. I'm gonna start a management company. You don't want to sign me. I'm gonna start a record label. Like it kind of happened like that. For sure. And with you bumping all these people who who in it for themselves and everything, fresh off a deal, was that like was it hard to mix? Uh, like because you you know you was just off the deal. Was it hard to mix hunger and patience? Like because you say you got to learn contracts and learn everything, but you. 
but you out here searching for what's next like you you uh running into people you want to do partnerships with was it hard mixing the two like sitting down and learning this new road that you're I going think to that's uh, as much as i don't believe in zodiacs and astrology uh-huh. i think that's what coming to becoming a gemini play is the biggest role for me how so because i don't mix nothing wow for sure. I'm, that, that that line thick for me it is you know what i'm saying like down to the label right now like the label and the management company stuff like that like i do not mix nothing sure. like i don't mix nothing so for me it ain't really hard for me on the business side it was just more like like i'm i'm terrible as a rapper bro like i don't I don't like to dress like them. I don't like to keep up. I don't like to change clothes. All the, I love jogging pants. I, I, I got jewelry, I got jewelry and all that. But this is just like if you ask me, this marketing. It's all real and shit. But it's like it's really just for like marketing. I wouldn't wear this on no Sunday if I wouldn't come and do no interview with y'all. It's like, but it ain't no character either. Like it's all me. It's really me. But at the same time, I, I sucked as a rapper. What it took to become a rapper, like outside of the actual skill part, I was terrible. So I think that's where like getting on this side of the fence worked for me way better you mm-hmm. know like I said I ain't did an interview in five years but it's because I don't care to talk like my results is kind of like the work is to talk you know what That's I'm saying right. like and even now it's just like it's so much to talk about it makes sense to come sit down with a, a quality you know a quality brand and platform to talk to you know what I'm saying because right. I really don't like talking because I know how these these chop ups happen and these mix ups happen and how the perception can be when you're done once you get off these microphones mm-hmm. but like i really respect this brand so it's like okay cool i'll come sit with y'all for sure because i really do respect what y'all doing yes, you know but there ain't too many other people it's like y'all and what's the word that i like uh, other people cool but it's like we ain't got no rapport where i feel like y'all gonna let it be what it is as opposed to try to get, get a hairline or something yeah, exactly i feel that i'm the same way i don't really like talking myself but as far as interviews and everything this is probably when i talk the most you know for what sure. I mean? yeah for sure <laughs> for real yeah bro. and it's a lot to talk like that's the other problem like it's so much to talk about like it's so much going on currently for me like we could be here longer than an hour you know what i'm saying right, and we yeah. can and, but you know it's cool you know i want to i want to i want to do this a little bit more you know because at the same time it's like it's so much you probably wouldn't even know what I'm touching. Some people come up here and you know they just handling the interview wouldn't even know like okay, multiple part of that too. Mm-hmm. So hey, we we uh, we gonna make use of our time, man, you know. <laughs> so sure, so hey, sure. now with so much going on, bro. Yeah, like you say, you got your hands in, in everywhere. Just um just mm-hmm. looking at the like when you um when you posted it on IG and I'm looking at everything that you tagged in there, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you balance life having all that going on? Because I could barely balance what I got going on. You feel yeah. me? Um, the balance part ain't easy. I will never make it seem like it ain't. But um, priority, you know, like the tour kind of supersedes things right now. Artists is easy on the label side because everybody on the calendar, everybody on the schedule. So nothing really bumps. You know what I'm saying? We thought we was going to have a bump uh, like last week, but we didn't. So, like, those things you can kind of plan out better. Um and then just, you know, I'm really trying to build up the team. Like, we got a lot of talent. We don't have enough administrators. We don't have enough agents and structure. Like, I'm I'm really looking for, which I think this is a good platform to use as well, like any young, aspiring music people, you know, like mm-hmm. that want to be on the business side of music or you just want to be a part of something, you know, like I got, I got a lot of room in that area for people because um, if you look at my whole infrastructure and my whole team, like none of, nobody got music experience. My people from the streets so like, what's old rappers or something like that. Whatever they did, but none of them, like, have as much experience as me in the music industry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm turning people into music people, music business people, people that people can respect and lean on for resources and relationships. Even, like, my little brother Mackie, like, he was a rapper three years ago, three mm-hmm. and a half years ago, you know, been shot twice, all type of stuff. But, like, he get around. He hustling. Like, he get like, on this side of the fence, he hustling. You know, he want this. You know what I'm saying? So if I can get, like... Three more Mackies, <laughs> I'd be all right. That's real you know talk. How do you turn uh, people into? Uh, first of all, I want to say shout out Mackie because you know, he, bro. he working hard and everything, and that's, that's evident. You know, so, uh, how do you turn bro. people into? You know what I'm saying? Into that? When it ain't really that. a turn. It got to be a decision for them too. For sure. You know, like you can have a vision. I have a vision. Mm-hmm. You know, and getting thrown. I think the biggest thing is like when you get y'all got to understand. Like we not in high school. You mm-hmm. know, like this ain't cute. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we grown. Some exactly. people got kids. Some exactly. people, most of my people got kids. We got families. We got so they not following behind nothing that ain't working out in their favor or not working out for their benefit at the exactly. same time. But at the same time, it's like real conversations to be had. I remember calling Mackie one day, like, "You suck as a rapper. Oh, you ain't ain't nothing special about you." 
can I finesse this? Can I make it look good for you? Can you get a couple dollars? Yeah, but you suck. Here, you can have so much more impact on this side, on the business side. You could be an A&R. I can show you what that means. You can go run around with artists. You got relationships. You like to be out. You like to move around. This would be better for you. You know what I'm saying? And he listened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for that, that's what I'm grateful for. You know, like, and then now he loves it. He loves what he do, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get more people on the other side, you know, because it's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot that you could do. So it's just a lot of it is just being transparent and trusting me. Like, he know I ain't going to lie to him. Like, exactly. I'm going to just tell you the truth. Like, bro, this ain't this ain't where your strength at. For sure. A lot of people say they want to be a boss. They want to be a leader, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. half the people don't understand what goes into being a boss or a leader. You feel sure. me? So what would you say is your definition of both those two things? First of all, people do think they want to be the, the boss or the CEO or whatever. But the number one thing is people really don't want the responsibility. I'm responsible for so many people. Like, so many. It's 20-something people. You know what I'm saying? 20-something people. Like, and I mean, like, responsible for their rollouts, responsible for their budgets. Everybody, I'm not responsible for their budget, but, like, it's a 50% for sure I'm responsible for budgets. Uh, relationships, managing relationships. You know, a lot of talent I break is developing talent. Y'all don't be knowing these people. And then y'all be, you know, even when y'all do the things that y'all do after strength, I appreciate it because y'all don't be knowing these people. Y'all can trust me. Y'all can trust that my brand is that. But y'all don't be knowing these people. Y'all don't be knowing the artists. So um, the administration work, you know, the – the, the the teaching the mentoring um and then the losses nobody won't nobody takes the losses like i do you know what i'm saying like i got people on real payroll if we didn't make no money this week they still got paid but guess who didn't me you know so um i just tell people all the time like you know when you're really doing it you know you ain't even really got time to even try to get acknowledgement like you don't really got time to look up and be like why y'all not acknowledging me because you're so busy in it and a lot of this stuff be created from the ground up, you know, like these tours and stuff. Ain't nobody coming to me with these ideas. This is me waking up saying, all right, it's time to get on a tour. It's time to get on the road. I think we talked about that last time I was here. Like, look, it's time to get certain people on the road. We got people on the road now, you know. So um, a lot of it, yeah, I just don't pe think people know what they signing up for. You know, I just, I be transparent. Like, Mackie learning it right now. Hate to bring a little bro back up. He just signed the artist to our label, and he's the point of contact for that artist, and it's a challenge. I'm like you see what I go through, a third of it, you think you this with one person and he doing really good. You know that uh King Pen Rue, shout out Pen Rue, but uh but yeah, you know, people don't see it until they in it. Facts. For sure. Now you you like you say when you was here last time you spoke on the tour. So how did you go about choosing each artist to be a part of this? For sure. Um interest. I like everybody on the bill. Um what else? Analytics. Data. We do we do due diligence. We research. Um, which is how Steve will end up headlining in the tour. Uh but it's a lot of it, like I got a relationship with Steve O. So when I hit him, I just gave it to him flat out. I was like, Look, I wanna do something and it ain't no shade to nobody who do anything on the local front, like with the refuge lives and the baselines and the promontories, but we can do those every month. And you can get the same crowd coming out every month. Right. But you don't really know if you hot or warm or cold until you get outside of the shit you're comfortable with. You know, so I, I, I had a conversation with everybody on this tour. Flex, Blessing, Steve-O, J-Mo, and Slit, and just let them know, like, look, the first show going to be lit. I ain't going to lie. Gary going to be sold out because it's local. But when we go to Joliet and Danville and Elgin and Country Club Hills and some of the places that's coming up that want to buy dates, it could be humbling. If you, you don't know how lit you are in these places, you don't know if your people are going to commute and travel to see you, especially the people from home. But, you know, we got a structure that's set up in place where we're not going to have no empty venues. Like, I made sure of that. But at the same time, it's like all of these artists were handpicked and, you know, we had I had genuine conversations with each of them. Called each of them myself, like, look, I got an idea. Um, a lot of them didn't even know I did this in 2016, you know, with Duck and them. But um, I was like, look, I got an idea. Like, you know, and, you know, I'm going to fit the whole bill and I'm going to make sure you feel great and you're going to be well taken care of as well. But, you know, it's a it's a risk. It's a hell of a risk. So we got to see if it's going to make sense. So that was all. It was just simple conversations. You know, I got I know all of them individually. So it's cool. 
Yo, yo, it's your boy Biko. Make sure you head over to the Apple Store and Google Play Store and download the Illinois app right now. From there, you'll be able to stream Illinois Radio live every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. As well as stream podcasts, watch interviews, check out the latest news, and so much more. So head over there to your App Store and download the Illinois app. Yo, Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir. Checking back in with our guest, Mogul. Now, I want to go back into the uh, Nice Like This tour and ask, what's uh, one thing about touring that, like, uh, spectators or uh, concert ongoers really don't know about? Everything in the background. For sure. Like, what's... uh, Insurance. (laughs) What's uh, what's, what's so uh, big about the insurance? Uh, Risk. Sure. Rap shows, like y'all know that, you know, rap shows. Even they, these venues do check out the artists on the bill. Mm-hmm. They go look at their YouTube's real quick, or they have their kids look at them, and they come back and tell you. That's why you always hear about last minute cancellations. Yeah. So I be also be putting it in my paperwork to make sure like that they do all of their due diligence early, so we don't deal with no last minute cancellations. Like go vet all of these artists out and make sure y'all good with them before we commit. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's cool. Show out. Now that's one thing I didn't know. Uh, they actually go on YouTube pages and check yeah. them out before then. Yeah, for sure they investigate. They want to know what's coming into their venues. They these venues cost so much money to to operate. They want to make sure that they're not risking their licenses and stuff in place too. Most definitely. Yeah. So if they're gonna pick in the lineup to make sure that you know it's a lineup that's attractive, but at the same time it don't don't come with no risk for me later. What's the um? I know we in the middle of a pandemic and you're planning a, a tour in the pandemic. But what's the biggest difference from five years ago when you threw the tour until now? No pandemic. <laughs> For sure, it <laughs> no ain't. Pan, no, no risk is still. It was a lot more risk in 2016, mm-hmm. but um, just the CDC stuff. Like I ain't really had. I ain't. That was a, that wasn't a thought. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Now it's capacity limits. It's uh, mask, it's vaccinations, it's all type of stuff. It's no different, like, with the planning and everything? Yeah, because you got to plan to cancel. For sure. <laughs> gotta, no, I'm talking about, like, as far as, yeah. like, say what you what you learned from being in this position five years ago until yeah. now. Um, again, easier because the talent at that time was way more risky. You know, they was into it with each other even. You know, mm-hmm. like, some of them was into it with each other. Some of them... Uh, just had a following that just brought on negativity. You know what I'm saying? So like we had we had weird shit happen the whole tour. Oh, know, yeah. All them days, like I can tell you all type of stories of, you know, God bless Duck. You know, rest in peace. Um, but and uh, everybody else on that tour, I hope everybody in well and you know in their respective places. But um, no, this this time is a little easier. This is a funner tour. Mm-hmm. Steve O is fun. Flex is a great talent. Uh, Blessing is fun. You know, J Mo is fun. Slitter is a great performer. So like. Less less tension. Okay. <laughs> yeah, less you. tension on this tour. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. All right, now you got the, the label, the agency, mm-hmm. the tour, mm-hmm. and the compound. Mm-hmm. I want to I wanna zone in on the compound because that's something that I hope to achieve one day, you feel me? Somewhere artists can go mm-hmm. and just be creative, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So what was your thought into going and creating a compound? That was my partner. Um, my partner had the space first. Um and I remember, I remember when he first got it. He was like, "Man, come check this out. We could do great things." He said, "Woo, woo, woo," and it just wasn't the right time for me mentally. I think I was going through a lot of personal stuff at the time. Um, and then we revisited it, and um, when we did revisit it, um, I was still coming out of some personal hardships. But I was like, and Quarters was a big advocate for this too. Like, it makes sense. Like, go do it. You know. So me and my partner, uh, we partnered up to do the compound, but. Yeah, and it was kind of like the next lateral. I had just had a studio too on on thirty fifth, uh, so it was like this was like the next lateral move, you know. And it was like for me, I'm mogul and I'm a person with these companies. Like I need my own space, you know. I ain't renting studio time no more. I ain't got time to be taking meetings at Starbucks, and I need just a space where I can just come in and operate and create, and other people can create, and we can kind of create like a hub. And that's what we got right now. How how do you think that has helped the artist that's under you? The compound? Yeah. It don't. They don't even record. <laughs> like, they all, they these people got kind of, like, got their own, like, way that they record and stuff like that. So it's cool, like, when they need stuff. Like, if they need, like, video space, of course they can call me for it. Or um, we working on a label album, so we, we might record most of the label album at the compound and even send it out to get mixed and mastered wherever we choose to. Um, but, no, it's just another resource for them whenever they choose to use it. But none of them, like, my stuff ain't, like, 
death row like where, where it is death row but it ain't like death row where it's like you gotta like you gotta record at the compound because you signed to me like no nah, y'all can go record it wherever y'all choose to some people record at home you know and they got their own setup so it ain't like that ain't no force it's just like it's death row whenever they want to use it now i follow you on twitter you feel me and, and mm-hmm. you you talk about disconnecting a lot you feel mm-hmm. me how important is disconnecting just from everything because you got a lot going on it's, it's everything man i want to do it right now so bad <laughs> i'm ready to go black oh like, because i ain't really i'm not internet mm-hmm. like, i'm not when i say that i mean that in the purest way like ask my cousin like charlie Yuck, ugly ass trap any i don't do well in this space like i'm just not good at the internet and i'm not trying to be you know what i'm saying like i've looked at social media managers and stuff like that they just ain't consistent or like reliable enough but I really want to go black, like, right now. I want to go black. On, on, I don't even want to go on it. Like, when I mean go black, I mean deactivate. Like, not mm-hmm. just delete the app or change the avi. Like, I'm talking about deactivate for 30 days minimum. It's good for me. Like, it's really good for me. But with my platform, with my followers and everything, and promoting a tour and having different artists roll out the way that we rolling out, it ain't really good for business right now. But it's, it's tough because I really want to. Man, like I say, man, I be having so much going on with these cameras, bro. Yeah. And it just, every day seems so exhausting to me. You it know is. what I'm saying? I be like, oh, yeah. I got to edit this. You feel me? I got a whole day of shooting for this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it just be overwhelming. And I, I see how people start to struggle with mental health and things mm-hmm. like that. Because it's like, man, at some point you need some time for yourself. And yeah. you need time to, if you just want to sit on the couch, then that's what you want to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I go to therapy, though. Like, I attend therapy every week um, for an hour. Um, I'm also real schedule-based. Like, ain't nothing I could do on the fly. So, like, I try to find one evening a week where I don't move. Because my, my week is real structured. Like, I know when I'm going to be at the compound for five, six hours at a time. Um, I got I got a young child, so that's, like, a big part of my – that's really my only disconnect. Like, because people do know when she with me, my youngest with me, Ain't no meetings, ain't no compound, ain't I'm not moving. I don't even risk it. Like she don't even be in a car with me like that. So when we when she get with me the few days a week I do get her, we in the house. And that's the time when it's like I might take a couple calls or something. But really with me is her. We playing. Like that's I, that's my little time. Cause she the only innocent thing I got. Like she the only thing that don't come with no no requirements, no ask, no hidden agenda, no nothing. She just a four year old that just wanna play. You know what I'm saying? So Hey, that's major, bro. I ain't gonna lie, that's a great response for real. Man, it's super dope just just being a father, you know what I'm saying? And, you <laughs> that's know, the best title I got. You know, growing up, we always heard that uh black fathers not around. Like yeah. I don't know any deadbeat fathers, Me bro. Either. Every every guy that I know that has a for child, sure. they in their life, you feel me? It's a law around me. You can't even be around me. Facts, that's weird. Like, yeah. bro, you created something. Yeah. Weird. No, and I be knowing about it too, you know, like it's on it's I tell like people know like Especially in my world, like, I can't even go too many days without personal time with my kid because then I'm not me. I'm not I'm not even focused, you know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't even counting the countless FaceTimes and calls we do a day. You know, like, I'm leaving him. I'm going to get a, like, we got to, like, that's important for me. Like, it's my foundation. Like, if I, I can't even do none of this other stuff, if she, if me and her ain't on the same, I me and both of my kids, both, but my oldest ain't really, my oldest fifteen, like she, yeah, she, she got a whole yeah. life. As long as the Zelle and the Cash App is there, and, I and can the make phone work, the, it's in the internet there. Facts. She ain't really can. Like I gotta bribe her with dinner dates and stuff like that. Yeah. Food get her outside, but my youngest, nah, she on my hip. Like she wanna, you know, be in my face all day. Back, she wanna get on my back and all of that. We in that space right now. Now, how do you go from from father to connecting these artists with these Fortune five hundred companies? Mm. Relationships, relationships is healthy in a lot of places, but um, it's really the relationship with me and the brands. You know what I'm saying? Like one thing they do know about, especially in RA, is that we reliable. You know, like um, I'm in my entire career of music, anything, only been sued once, only been part of one lawsuit, and I was just mentioned. You know what I'm saying? So one thing I can say is, business is strong, relationships are strong, and respect is strong, especially like when it comes to like people putting their money in my hands to get things that they need done. I'm really, I'm real anal about that type of stuff. So, um, you know, we, we just had Marita DJ join uh, an NRA, you know, in her first week she was on a full locker event, like a big full locker event and more to come. So, you know, for me it's just about maintaining healthy relationships and delivering when they ask, because they do ask for 
things that you know they wouldn't ask other companies for. Mm-hmm. What's um what's a long term goal for uh, NRA as far as overseeing all these artists that's on the rise and everything? The long term goal mm-hmm. is to really contribute to making healthier people. Like NRA just ain't about posting you on the Instagram and saying you NRA. Like mm-hmm. you go through like. We want to make sure your credit in space. We want to make sure your 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 LLC is in place that you can potentially get business funding mm-hmm. later. You know, uh, life insurance, all of the things that other people don't care about. That's the only thing I care about. Like I don't care if I didn't make you no money during your tenure. Mm-hmm. I know I put you in a better position than when you left. Because my biggest thing is just like people be outside with me and we be kicking in. We have great times, right. and people don't be as comfortable as me. You know, like, but people don't know why I'm comfortable. People think it's all rap. Like, no, it's real estate, it's tech, it's all type of stuff. So it's like, I be trying to get a sauce in that space. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you should do other things, you know, to residual income. Just things like that, that the typical, when you're in the industry and you lit, you moving too fast, you know, so nobody's really telling you, like, or nobody has the experience to tell you what it's like when it slows down. So for me, it's like, I've been where you at. I had a moment. I made a lot of money. I made a lot of mistakes, but this is what you should be doing to at least have some type of foundation that even when you're done with me a year and a half from now, you're in a better position than when you met me. For sure. Now, I know this sounds cliche, but how important was it for you to go through those mistakes and learn from them? No, nah, it was everything, you know, and I didn't been through two depressions. <laughs> like, I don't want people to think, like, I don't get, like, I t- and this is the mistake that I feel like some of my predecessors have made, letting people think that you got it all figured out when you don't. Because I don't. I wake up every day and figure this shit out like everybody else. Mm-hmm. I just might wear it better. You know what I'm saying? But, like, people around me still struggle. People around me shouldn't be struggling that I didn't probably help too many times and we back in the same spot we in, but it come with the game. You know, like, and I'm big on, I'm a people person. Like, I'm all about impact. Like, I it's so many, like, I got a call the other day that warmed my heart. A dude just telling me, like, dude, you changed my life, bro. Like, you put me on. You gave me this opportunity. I ain't never... I got I got a family now and I could do these like them that's it's all that's the reward for me you mm-hmm. know like it's some people that we got great business situations and we probably didn't make no money back together but you in a better position than when I met you for sure and when you um when you meeting uh these people that you can uh potentially inspire basically how do you go about meeting people whose lives you can whose lives you can change like say if Say if I just met you and I'm trying to uh, become yeah. a better person because you know you say you want to turn out people to better people. How can you potentially reel me in to to lead me on that? One, path? I'm gonna just watch you for a while. For sure. Like I'm a, I'm gonna probably make money with you without even you being contractually associated to me. That happens with damn near everybody. For sure. Nobody got rushed and signed. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> like just double checking, but. Um, no, I'm I'm an energy person too. So like, if I know your spirit in the right place, and I know, and I've been watching you for a long long time. Like even people like J Mo, I know J Mo since I was an artist years ago. You mm-hmm. know, but it was just like it was one of the things that kind of made sense. Like I I didn't gave you so much information at the time. It's like and we built a rapport. You're a great dad. I'm watching all of that. Mm-hmm. You know, like Marie, Marie, I done, me and Marie probably even did nine transactions outside of NRA. Just just being a person I like. Like, normally it's like DJ Sean, of course, he signed to me as well. So, like, she she's, she was normally the backup. Like, whenever he couldn't do something, mm-hmm. she'd be my secondary, even though she never was signed. So, like, then it was like, yo, like, what's up, bro? Can we figure it out? Like, that's what she can't, like, can we figure it out? Because, like, you just be literally throwing me big plays, and you don't even owe me that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's always there for me. It's always, like, genuine and, you know, um, Something that I feel like I've been watching for a while. Like, even Penru, I watched him. Know he a good guy. Me and Stunt close, you know, so. But, like, that couldn't have happened if I ain't been observing you. Mm -hmm. I need to see how you move. I need to see how you react to certain things, you know. Because I don't do internet. So, like, when anybody play internet, like, you cut. Mm -hmm. (laughs) cut, It's instantly cut. So, But, luckily, you know, we got a good system that we vet out people before they can come around. For sure. Man, in 2021, everybody want to be an entrepreneur. For you sure. feel me? Everybody think it's super easy to be an entrepreneur. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So what advice would you have to anybody out there that just say, man, I want to get out here and I want to figure it out on my own? You got to know what you're trying to figure out. You know, like, 
anybody can wake up today and get an LLC. That's the easy part. But it's like, do you know if you don't make no money with the LLC after the first year, you still got to pay taxes? Do you know that, you know, there is nobody coming? You got to wake up every day and put that battery in your back. Yeah. You know, do you know that? then don't become responsible for other people because <laughs> then it's a whole nother thing, you know, like, so if you're just in your own little world and you just want to, you know, do something to say you're doing it, that's cool. But I, I think I tweeted this two days ago. Like, remember why you started? Like, remember why? Like, even on my tough days when shit don't go the way I want it to go, I'll be like, I know why I started. I really wanted to make an impact. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest thing. Like, I'm going to make money regardless. I'm going to make enough money to take care of my life, my lifestyle, my family lifestyle, my children. And all, that's going to happen regardless. But, when you start sowing it to so many people, some it's almost like gambling. Something gotta happen. You can't have six artists on a record label, five clients on NRA, a tour, real estate, compound with five employees over there, tech, and all these different things going on. And something ain't gonna pop. Something gonna pop. Something gonna pop and take care of everything. You know, so it's just like, you know, just being and I do wanna get lean. You know, like I have them days when I be like, man, I should just do tech. But people don't talk back and just in real estate because them properties don't talk back and just get out the industry. Mm-hmm. But then when I look at the impact I have made and the impact I'm looking to make, even with the app, I got a, I got an app with Lyrical and uh, BZ Car Reach. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be a tool for people, you know, like that ain't that ain't popular to do. Like this is a resource, you know, like for people globally, too. So. And we got interns in India and everything that's working with us on this app. Like, we're developing this app right now. We're in phase one. So, like, it's all about what I'm going to leave when it's over with. You know what I'm saying? I walk in here and I see certain things. Like, oh, I I was a part of that. That was cool. You know, like, that type of stuff. That's what it's about. Like, it's about I'm playing chess right now. And it's honestly just, like, one thing I say to myself every day when I do my affirmations is just, like, how to control the board. Like, I want to control the board. I I want that much input that you can't avoid me at this point. That's all it's about right now. Now it's about making people stronger, strength in numbers. I ain't really looking to add too many more people around because we got a full roster in a lot of places, but I'm looking for new energy. I'm looking for young people that's going to be schools like Columbia and, and uh, Illinois Institute, whatever, like anybody that just, you know, got an interest in music or just business. It ain't got to be music. I got the compound. I got all these different things, right? Like if you just got, if you're just somebody with some type of drive and initiative, and you want to like, and you just want somebody that's gonna help you just make less mistakes. Like, reach out to me. For sure. Now you got you say with the real estate, the tech, the compound, uh, NRA. Now, how do you just sit back and oversee all these things? Because you say you say you real observing with the artists and the people you bring yeah. in, but how do you actually uh, sit back and and observe all these uh, like these the, entities? Yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah, it's, a it's a structure. It's a structure. It's an entity thing. Like it's it's really like a it's like I try to run it as much of an enterprise as I can. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even talk to everybody every day. I do have my people I talk to every day, the Yo Carlys, the Quarters, the Max, uh, my partner, Khalif, um, uh most of the business people, you mm-hmm. know, but then like and then they may communicate down to the artists or right. something like that, you know. And that's just on some not to dis not to disconnect too much, but it's like if I'm dealing with day to day stuff, it's no way I could focus on I just, I'm producing a tour right now. Exactly. No one else wants that responsibility. So in, in order for me able to be able to do that, other people have to be accountable in other areas, whether it's dealing with artists, going to studio sessions, going to concerts. Mm-hmm. Like, we got so many people moving around right now, I can't make it to shows. So, like, you know, Matt got to go to shows. Quarter got to go to shows. Carly, all my, my whole team. Right. Know, and, I, and I come out when I can, for sure. But, you know, we, we got a pretty good understanding sure. of where we need people to be. For sure. All right, now, before we get out of here, go ahead, shout out everything you got going on once again. Tell the people where they can find you. All right, that part going to be hard, but um, shout out to D1CMG, the label, New Regime Agency, the Compound, Reach. Nice Like This tour goes out this Saturday, September 11th, and Gary, Indiana at the Law for Deek, Headliner, OG Steve-O, 100 Flex, Lil Blessing. Uh, J Mo from the band Slitter, Sally Bands is one of the opening acts, and we got some opening acts that go on before them as well. That um, they got some slots. Uh, catch up with myself on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is I am dot mogul. My Twitter is mogul says. Um, yeah, we got the tour going out right now. We got um, artists rolling out. The next artist rolling out is Sale Paths. He'll be rolling out. Um, yes, his, sir. He dropping Big Bang video Sunday, September twelfth. Um, he also at uh, SneakerCon. 
uh, next weekend. They got a booth, uh, so we'll be out there supporting them as well. Um, yeah, no more, more, more. Not more announcements on the way, but more plays on the way. More things that we're looking to do. Stay in tune for the Reach app. I'm gonna be doing a clubhouse with Lyrical soon. Uh, we're gonna be doing a summit soon as well. So it's a lot of going on. You know, but just stay in tune with us. Uh, follow me on all those platforms. Go on to d1cmg.com. Go to the compound115.com. Um, get in tune with our resources. All right, Jimmy, talk to the people real quick. Yes, sir. First off, man, shout out our guest, Mogul, man. His hands are so much stuff, man, so make sure y'all get a part of that, man. Make sure y'all go on that Nice Like These tour, man. Check it out. Check out all the good local talent, man. Man, coming to a place near you soon, man. So y'all get in tune. Uh, follow me, Groove Nuke, G-R-O-O-V-N-U-K-E, Ill Sound Radio, I-L-L Sound Radio, Illinois app. Go ahead and get that as well, man. Submit music, man. Check out podcasts, whatever you want from the app, man. Jay, what you got to say? All right, like Jimmy say, man, y'all download that app once again. Mogul, shout out to you for sliding through, chopping it up with us. Like, I love a perspective like yours, you feel me, because you were actually out here doing it. You know what I'm saying? So Appreciate it's always that. great to get the information from somebody that's doing it. So salute to you and everything you got going on.